So when we say Israeli-Palestinian conflict, it sounds like there are just two sides, but in reality, it's way more complicated than that. The Israeli-Palestinian conflict basically encompasses four different areas. There's obviously Israel, the Gaza Strip, there's the West Bank and East Jerusalem. The history of the conflict is really long and really complicated. For the last several decades, there's been fighting over which people are entitled to which bits of the land. But the way things currently stand, the core issue is that the Israeli military occupies what we call the Palestinian territories and there are various Palestinian movements that want that to end. The main players are Fatah, the political group that is basically in charge of running the West Bank. And then on the other side, there is Hamas, which is an Islamist movement that is in charge of running the Gaza Strip. So the political ideologies of Fatah and Hamas are not particularly compatible, which makes it difficult for there to be a kind of united Palestinian front against the Israeli occupation of the Palestinian territories. When we say occupation, what that means is the Israeli military presence in the Palestinian territories. Daily life for Palestinians who live in these three different areas looks completely different. It's much more mixed up and much more complicated than just this blanket Israel versus the Palestinians. Palestinians living in East Jerusalem generally don't have Israeli citizenship, so they still face a lot of difficulties in everyday life accessing services. To Israel, West and East Jerusalem are both part of Israel, but to the Palestinians and to most of the international community, East Jerusalem is the capital of a future Palestinian state. Palestinians living in Gaza arguably have the rawest deal. It's home to more than two million people. People often talk about Gaza as being the world's biggest open air prison. Israel has total control of everything that comes in and out. 97% of the water is undrinkable. There's also been several rounds of devastating wars that these people have had to deal with. In the West Bank, 60% is totally controlled by the Israeli military. So on the other side of the conflict, there's obviously Israel. On paper, every Israeli government for the last 30 years has said that it wants a two-state solution. In reality, every Israeli government has continued to build settlements home to Jewish people in the West Bank, and it completely negates the possibility of a two-state solution. <laughs> Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has had no interest in pursuing the peace process at all. The Israeli leadership is right when it says that they don't have legitimate partners for peace on the Palestinian side. There has been very little appetite on the Palestinian side either to actually resolve the conflict for the last 15 years. The actual large-scale warfare and fighting has been concentrated on the Gaza Strip, devastating rounds of war between Hamas and Israel with rocket fire on both sides. It's basically impossible to predict what's going to happen in a place this complicated, but we're already seeing a lot more violent incidents in the West Bank and in Israel. There are worries for a lot of people that large-scale violence might not just be contained to the Gaza Strip. It might be happening on a large scale, the other side of the Green Line within Israel itself.